Well, hi everyone and welcome to Dementia in the Arts. Today we have a really special guest with us, um, a person who is renowned around the world for his advocacy for dementia. And, uh, and of course, I've got my sidekick here, uh, Mary Crescenzo. And uh, we are just gonna have, I think, a fun and interesting time. We're gonna change perceptions all around the world of what is possible. And so I am, uh, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm the founder of Alzheimer Speaks. My mom lived with dementia for 30 years and I'm kind of like Harry and Mary and Hazel. We're all out to kind of change the world and make uh, make life with dementia a better place. So Mary, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Yes, good. yes, I'm happy to be here. Hi, Harry, hi, Hazel. Um, I'm the author of The Planet Alzheimer's Guide, Eight Ways the Arts Can Transform the Life of Your Loved One and Your Own. Uh, the pl I'm a playwright and my play about Alzheimer's is called Planet A. And um, I'm excited to tell you all that in April, I'll be going to the 36th Global Alzheimer's Disease International Conference in Poland to talk about how art can dispel myths and can enrich all of our lives, caregivers as well as persons living with dementia. Wonderful. Well, congratulations <laughs> on, on going to that conference. That's very cool. Harry, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and then Hazel will uh, will have you follow. Okay. Oh, she's so happy. <laughs> my, my name's Harry Irving. Uh, I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's uh, over 20 years ago, and I'm showing more signs of vascular dementia. Uh, I'm also an ambassador for Sentimenta, an Italian uh, dementia awareness group, and the Purple Angels. Wonderful. And why don't you give a, um, a little promo for your huge Facebook groups? Oh, I always forget them. I have several, several Facebook groups. Uh, forget me not is my main one. And then I have, uh, like a forget me not, um, uh, Louis body group and vascular group, the different groups. I also have a forget me not recipe group because uh, people living with dementia they enjoy recipes, you know, cooking stuff like that. And I also have a uh, uh, a forget me not craft and uh, gardening group because we love we love to do crafts, we love to do gardening, and a fun page just to have fun. Fantastic. I was just always so impressed with you from the from day one when I met you online. And it was such a pleasure. I got to meet Harry one time when I was out east. Uh, he came to visit me and I was shocked at how tall you were. I remember just <laughs> looking up at you. Um, and that just really, really made my day. And sitting next to you is your wife, Hazel. So Hazel, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? Yes, I'm Hazel Urban. I am his wife. Um, I guess what you could say is I spent a lot of years in denial. But as I was watching it progress and watching everybody that is in his groups progress, it sank in. And now we live day to day. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Well, you have been um, amazing to me in terms of the support you have given Harry you know, over the years and, and being the, the guardian of safety. And one of the things we're going to talk about is in this conversation is how Harry's creative side and, and art form has changed over the years. Because Harry, you were on our show earlier and we featured all of your woodworking. And do you want to talk a little bit about why that why that changed? Well, I, I still do woodworking, but... Um... I tried to live my life by example. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people have the assumption that just because you have dementia, you can't learn new things. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do is I try to learn new things. And um, 
my new things now is 3D printing, and I got a laser engraver. So I'm, okay. I'm learning how to do that. But what I want people to think is if Harry can do that, I can do it too. And they give it a try. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, and you've done amazing things. And Hazel, I would imagine that must have been difficult. And I'm going by conversations that we've had on Dementia Chats with Harry and the panel there where, you know, he said, oh, Hazel had to take my my big garage lathe away from me. And then I got a tabletop one and, you know, making those adjustments or making the decision together to buy the 3D printer. How did, how did that affect you, Hazel, when, when things changed, when you didn't feel that it was safe for Harry? Well, as much time as he spends with doing this, I know he's safe doing it because like I said, I'm not here most of the day. And I come home every day and I say, so what did you make today? And sometimes I come home and there's a big pile of filament laying on the table. <laughs> but it is what it is. And he enjoys doing it. And as long as he enjoys it, I want him to keep doing it. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to pull up a, a picture here just to kind of give an example. And then we're going to actually look at um, a video. So Harry, do you want to talk about some of these pieces here? Yeah, um, my, my woodworking, my woodworking fantasy, I love doing stuff in wood. And I found this uh, wood filament that I can make things. Now what you see on this table is, is some of Hazel's favorite, favorite pieces. And um, it it's challenging because um you have to you have to resize everything and get it you know get it to work right but um they turned out pretty that that phone there um i made that also oh wow i made that I <laughs> I made that after uh, we have a Friday night chat and um, we had somebody come on from Venezuela and um, I, I saw this phone and uh, I asked her about it and she picked it up and she showed it and she said that was her mother's phone. So that got me inspired to make my own well, of course, it doesn't work anymore, but I I have a good time with the rotary dials. I have a question, if I may, uh, and I also have a comment. I am so taken by the artistry that you have to turn wood into these beautiful, beautiful shapes and make it look like a different material like baskets, etc. Um, it's so exquisite. But I, I have a question. What kind of wood do you use? What is the best kind of wood to do this? Is there one kind that works better, Harry? No, I like I like to use all kind of wood. Uh, now, when I make something out of walnut, uh, I have to be I have to be very careful. I always wear a mask anyway, but uh, one it gives off a um, uh, an enzyme, and I have asthma, so I have to be careful with that. But mm -hmm. I like I like using hardwoods versus softwoods like pine and stuff like that. I I stay away from that because they have the fibers in the wood are bigger. And you can't get the detail out of them. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm learning something. I know I'm going to learn a lot today. They're beautiful. They're beautiful, oh, Harry. Harry. So I have, a, I have a question. So are these, uh, just so our audience is clear, are these things that you carved or is this wood that you use with your 3D, 3D printer, which is a, a filament and a wood like? No, the the uh, excluding the phone, the rest of it is a wood filament. 
Now, uh, you have to be you have to be very careful with that because the wood filament had the fibers in it, and it has a tendency to clog up the nozzle in the printer. And there's a learning curve how to use that to to avoid that. And that's why a lot of times she'd come home and I just have like a big wig of filament, you know, because, oops, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so then can you reuse that material or is it is it tossed? You can't reuse it. Oh, no, you can't reuse it. Okay. <laughs> why don't we step through a little bit um how you how you do the 3D and then we'll we'll get to the video. So I remember Harry I, and and it still makes me giggle and and it makes me uh, just in awe of you. I remember you saying on dementia chats one time, well you know I I'm switching kind of my art and I'm using, you know, primarily this 3D printer. And he said the instructions said I should be able to put it together in two to three hours. And you said, but it took me with my dementia two to three days. And, you know, your persistence and not giving up. I just like I said, I'm just in awe of. So um, how did you go about deciding on a 3D printer? I, that wouldn't have even entered my mind. And again, you are so creative and so open to different things. What drew you to a 3D printer? Um, like I said, I wanted to I wanted to learn something new. And um a 3D printer, I was just fascinated by it. You know, I had I had no knowledge about it at all when I got started. So what I did is I bought uh, my first 3D print. Now, I went through like three or four printers now, uh, you know, because they keep getting better. And, of course, you have to get something better. You know, you, you, you start out buying a Chevy and then you end up buying a Lexus, you know, that <laughs> kind of thing. But um, the, when I ordered the printer, when I, when, when I buy printers, in my mind, you just plug them in and you go. Because I, I always thought of a printer that you put on a computer. There, there's nothing to it. Uh, but when when I bought the printer, it came in a box that was this big and that wide. And I said to Hazel, I said, this, this can't be. You know, it looks nothing like the picture. So I opened it up and... The Chinese are mad at me because he sent me one in a thousand pieces. So um, now you have to realize people living with dementia, especially me, I can't follow directions. So the, it came with instructions and the print was smaller than I could see. And I said to Hazel, I said, I can't read this. And she says, flip it over. That's in Chinese. Flip it over. That's in English. Okay. So anyway, I started building this thing. And things just weren't going good. You know. And Hazel, Hazel learned over the years that when I, when I start to get frustrated, it's time to stop. So um, she came up to me and she says, if you can wait till tomorrow, I'll help you with that. So what she does is she reads the instruction. Now, when I read, a lot of times people with dementia, they only read every other word or every third word. And that's what I do. And that's why it didn't make any sense to me. So she would be able to read it and then explain it. And I finally got it put together. And I was one happy camper. I mean, life was going to be good. So I, I I started to use it. And I couldn't use it. I mean, I didn't know what to do. So uh, during the Friday night chats, a friend of mine that lives in the western part of Pennsylvania, her 14-year-old son came on. Grandson. 
Huh? Grandson. Oh, grandson. I'm sorry. Well, 14 year old grandson came on and showed me how to use it. I mean, now, the point I was making is we can do this stuff, but we need help. Don't be afraid to accept the help. Now, here, I'm 77, going on 78, and I have this 14 year old kid showing me how to do something that, you know, but it worked. Yeah. Well, I know my granddaughter does 3D printing at the library. They have classes and um, a lot of the schools have them now. So how oh, yeah. cool for the intergenerational uh -huh. piece to come in. It's a great it's a great hobby for somebody living with dementia because it's so easy to use. Mm -hmm. Now, you might need help. And if, if you have to assemble anything, you might need help. And you might need some help using it. But once you get it down, I mean, mm -hmm. it's so much fun. Harry, I have a very basic question. And I think someone listening may have it too. How, in a nutshell, does a 3D printer work? I have no idea. <laughs> Can you get that roof down? While Harry's looking, I have to tell a quick story. I had a friend who had one of these maybe over 10 years ago when they first came out. And I didn't know, couldn't figure out then. And I can't figure out now. So tell this, us, Harry. This is the filament that you get. I, okay, now, this goes, into, this goes into a head which has a heater and a nozzle. And... What it does is it melts the it melts the the filament into the image. Okay, wow. I I never would have I, I never imaged a reel. I just imaged like pouring granules yes. into something. Well, else. <laughs> how do you how do you decide how do you tell the machine what the image is going to be? Okay, there's there's all kind of there's all kind of websites. Okay. You can download an image. Okay. Now, once you download the image, you have to convert it into a language that the 3D printer knows. Um, I see. Then you might want to use a CAD program to enlarge it, you know, resize it and stuff like that. Make it your own design. I see. I know what the CAD program is. So, that helps me. Thank you so much, because I really had no idea. <laughs> I would love to get a couple of those websites from you. What's kind of an average price range of these 3D printers and and also like a CAD program? I don't think those are free downloads or they didn't used to be years ago anyways. Well, you can you can get an entry level 3D printer for $175. Oh, you're up. kidding me. I was thinking thousands because I remember when they first came well, out. Well, if you buy it from me, it'd be thousands. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them on the side, Lori. <laughs> but um, it has, now that's, a, that's an entry-level one. That's a good beginner one. Mm -hmm. And then, like, like you can buy, I had two different types of, of 3D printers. One is a filament printer like this, and the other one was called a resin printer. Mm -hmm. And a resin printer, uh, you have a bottle of resin and it shoots the spray and make it. Well, that became too difficult for me. So I let the filament. And so, of course, I had to buy a bigger one. And um, the home was like that one, the one I have now might be like 250 something like that but now you can get you can get more expensive ones but to me it doesn't make sense to do that because i don't i don't do commercial work you know so as a hobby you want to stick when i when i when i start something i want to start it that people living with dementia can afford it now, if I would say the 3D printer costs $3,000, they're going to 
no, I can't do that. But if if you say you can get a new one for say less than less than two hundred dollars, let's say, then they might be able to work that into the budget. Now the filament, a rule like that might cost uh it's under twenty dollars, depending on on the color and stuff like that. Now what's what's nice about that is on the video you can see a lot of the things I made is I used multicolor filament. And it's actually you can see the different colors, maybe yellow, mm -hmm. red, blue, whatever. I would love to see more of these slides because I am just enchanted by the work that you do. <laughs> yeah, don't, be, don't be disappointed. <laughs> before I pull that up, I have one other question. How big is a 3D printer? How much room does that take up? See it? Oh, so so it's the flat thing with the higher up there. Yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have you talk. Okay, yeah, right there. Now the 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 filament sits on that up and it feeds down into this head. Okay, interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. Ooh. Well, let me go ahead and pull up this video. And okay, Harry, I'll let you take it away from here. Okay, a, a lot of a lot of now again. That's that was picture with used with the wood. And these are some of the. This is a waffle. <laughs> I love that. It, it's a waffle box. And that's another video. This I did at, at Halloween. And a popcorn type. But that's using a silver filament. Now these angels at Christmas time, I, I had to make like three or four of them for Christmas gifts. That's one using the Morty color filament. The same with that one. Uh, these are Christmas balls I made for the tree. And at Halloween, I had to make a trick or treat box. Merry Christmas. Uh, some more tree ornaments. These are pencil holders for your desk. Another bud vase and, and another angel. That's one of my favorites. That's a nice one, but it leaks. <laughs> and I made it by laser engraver. I made quite a few of them. <clears throat> That's another brown vase. Mm -hmm. I made that light or lamp, and then I wired it up so Hazel could use it in the kitchen. Hmm. But you just have to use your imagination. Just let your imagination go. <clears throat> now, the problem is you make too many things. You you don't know what to do with them. <laughs> oh, it's a dragon. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I made that for Hazel because she was having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some more things I made on my laser engraver. <laughs> Is the laser engraver, is that a separate thing or is that part of the 3D printer? Well, <clears throat> you can you can buy a laser engraver head for it and do it interchangeable. 
Um, so I thought that's what I do. I get a laser engraver head, but um, I couldn't get it to work. Mm. So the the laser engraver was like $150. So instead of going through all the frustration of trying to make it work, um, I sent that head back and I got the I got the laser engraver. Now it looks similar to that. I mean it has the same the same it has a laser head and what the laser head then is is go back and forth and there's a laser that puts light down and burns it it actually burns in in the window. Mm. What, I, what I did is I went to uh, Hobby Lobby and I bought these. You're, you're not showing them to me. Huh? You're not showing them. No, that's the side. That, <laughs> but uh, I bought the wood uh, because I needed, I needed to learn how to use it. Now, if you look at that, that's really not centered on properly. But like I said, there's a learning curve to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's half the fun. Yeah. Well, I I love back to the three D objects. I love the shapes, the colors, the patina, the texture, the designs. Some make you smile. Some make you want make me wonder. They're so varied, and all just so powerful. And then I want to mention in regard to the laser printer, I was trying to think what it reminded me of. And it reminded me of something called Scrimshaw. Do you remember, you know, that kind of thing? I guess, I don't know what they did. Maybe Harry, you know, but where there was carving on something. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it had to do with the sea or mariners. Maybe you can tell us about it. But that reminded me of the modern way of making scrimshaw. I think that's how you say it. What I want to do is I want to be able to turn a box and maybe maybe burn something like that on the lid. Yes. You know, but um, what, what I did is now I've, I've been experimenting and I took a, a, a tree branch that came down during a storm and I cut it down into slices and I wanted to see if I can engrave on it. And I could. Mm -hmm. You just have to let your mind go. You know, it's so important for people with dementia to dream and to to imagine making stuff like when I do my wood turning I take up I, I take a hunk of wood and put on my lathe and I have no idea what it's going to be you know I don't draw plans or anything like that mm. but whatever it turns out that's what it is you know sometimes like I don't know how many bowling pins I turn before I got the hang of making a vase, you know, <laughs> it, it never looked like it never looked like a vase, but it made a a, a fine bowling pin. <laughs> that was one of my other questions. When you start, how do you start? What do you know? Do you know what you're going to do? And you've answered my question for me. You just let your imagination go. Thank you. Well, see, see what I what I do now. Uh, if you look, I did a lot of vases. Uh, because uh, I like them and and I like putting flowers in them, you know. Like if you look all through my office here, I have nothing but vases that are made with with artificial flowers now, uh, because I forget to water them and then they die, and then that's not good. But um, if you want to like <laughs> go to one of these websites and like suppose I want to make um, a bowl a plate or something like that. And if you do a search on that on these websites, it will give you all kinds of different ideas on what to make. And like I said now, um, you might have to resize it. So 
I use Photoshop to resize stuff. And so, yeah, you might need different programs to do that. Okay, so you can use Photoshop versus the CAD program then? Yeah, no, you can use Photoshop with a 3D printer, but you can for the engraver. Now, um, most 3D printers come with a program okay. that allows you mm -hmm. to resize and stuff like that. Now, you, it won't like, like I made some things and I put my name on it or Merry Christmas or something like that. In that case, you have to have a CAD program. Now, there's there's a lot of free CAD programs you can download and and do that. Okay, well, well that's good to know because I, you know, my real estate background, the the people drawing plans used to use a CAD program. It was very very expensive and and uh, not everybody could afford it. So it's nice to see that that has that that has changed. <laughs> Hazel, I really want to hear from you because, uh, Harry, I can, you know, hear the joy coming out of you. I mean, it's just in, in your passion for this. Um, Hazel, what has it been like for you to see Harry kind of in the zone and and just very productive and purposeful? I can I I can answer that. It keeps me out of it keeps me out of her hair. <laughs> He has when he has all these projects, and I go to work. I don't have to worry about him because I know he's safe with him. And we did we did have an episode. He called me at work one day, and I missed the call, of course, because I was busy. And when I got finally got through to him, he said he couldn't breathe. I called an ambulance, mm -hmm. and I'm alone in the office. So I called somebody. I said, you've got to come in. I have to leave. Well, I made it, what, how many miles? About seven from here to the office in about 10 minutes. She wasn't driving safe. <laughs> <laughs> we already had him in the ambulance. Well, thank God you called, Harry. Well, what, what, what it was, was it ended up to be an asthma attack. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what led me into um, panic mood. Huh? Panic mood. Yeah. And with COVID and stuff like that, it was so bad. I didn't think the ambulance was going to make it in time. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought they'd find me dead on the steps. But um, we we set up procedures that if I'm here by myself, what what do you do in a case of an emergency? And I was able to follow those instructions you know first i called her and said hey i'm dying and then i called the ambulance and i knew what question they were going to ask me so that that's important for people living with dementia to know you have to you your care partner can't be with you 24 7. you know you're going to have some downtime by yourself so you have to you have to think beyond that. What would I do if this happens? Good mm -hmm. advice. Oh, what a scary moment that had to be for both of you. I just can't even imagine. Um, wow. Thanks for thanks for sharing that because that's a that's a really important piece for people to to consider. Um, Harry, I wanted to ask you in terms of your art. I know one of the things I enjoy, it's like, it seems like every day you make a piece and you post it to your Facebook page. Um, how often do you, do you make things? Whenever, whenever I remember, like, like today, I, I, uh, I put up a uh, hot air balloon with my picture on it. No, I you I did that on Photoshop. Again, use your imagination. We can learn new things. Now, do you do you sell your stuff at all? You make so many things. It's like where do you put them all? <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. do you do with them? <laughs> well, like like this, this past Christmas, like I said, I made I must have made four or five of those angels, and and somebody sees a vase, and Hey, Harry, I love that. 
okay, I took the hint, you know, so I, I make that. But um, everybody says, Harry, why don't you sell your stuff? But it takes the joy away because mm -hmm. it becomes a business. It becomes a job. Oh, uh, now I can, the things I make, they might be ugly, but the person I give it to just absolutely loves it. You know, and that just brings so much joy to me. That's why I love Christmas so much. That explains it. Okay. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> well, Harry, you, you've said something so important, and it's the doing. It's the making of it. It's being in the moment with it is where your joy and your excitement comes from. And that reflects on those who see it. And I think if if you're listening and you want to make art, it, it could be this, it could be just drawing, could be in the garden, it could be listening to music and singing along. That in the moment activity for you at various stages mm -hmm. is where you will find joy and Hazel and the people around you find joy in watching you do that. I, you, you've given us so many lessons today. So appreciate that. It's very, it's very cool. I, I think every neurologist in the world should have one of your pieces sitting on their desk, reminding them. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> that people with dementia are are creative and have purpose and and matter and mm -hmm. um and give them hope too because I, I i just i just think that they don't understand i mean i look at you harry and 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 hazel how long has harry been living with dementia now over 20 years yeah. over 20 years i i stopped counting at 20 Yep. And, and look at what you do. You know, people, do, people don't imagine that that's even close to possible many times after five years. Yeah. And, you know, you are just absolutely amazing and, and teaching people by leading by example and sharing your stories, both of you. It's so, so powerful. Yep. Now, and now, Harry, I know you do stuff with the hospitals, with memory cafes and stuff. Have you ever um, approached them, or maybe you don't have interest in this either, but just doing an art exhibit for them? I think yeah, they, would be interesting. I, I did that. They um, um, they have they have a section in in the hospital of that kind of stuff, like. Um, through Sentimenta, the Italian group that I'm involved with, the latest book has my picture on it. Mm. And um, I gave one to the hospital and they have that display. And they use that as an example of somebody living with dementia or maybe somebody with a handicap or whatever that they can do it. Now, I want to make the point, I'm nobody special. Like a lot of times when somebody talks to me, they can't believe that that I'm living with dementia, especially for 20 years, because they think after 20 years I should be in the late stages or I should be dead. But um, what they don't realize is I can't tell time. I can't count money. I don't drive. I don't remember my kids' names or grandchildren's names, things like that. My cognitive um, ability is, is poor. My short-term memory is bad. I live in the 60s because I progress back to the 60s. Now, if you ask me anything about the 60s, um, I got the answer for you because that's where I'm living. But if you ask me what I did last week, I don't know. That's why I don't answer my phone because my phone rings and I don't recognize it's the phone ringing. My, my phone is my camera. You mm -hmm. know, that's the, only, that's the only thing I use my phone for is to take pictures. So all the pictures I take, I take off my, my phone. Um, my text messages that don't read 
because like I like I said, I read every other word and it don't make sense to me. I so appreciate you sharing this. Uh, first of all, just as an artist, it's a good idea you're not on the phone or texting because it takes so much time away from the work that you want to do for yeah. any any artist. And I don't know if you could tell, but I kind of have tears in my eyes. And these are tears of amazement and joy. You are proving to us art for anyone brings something that is timeless and universal. And I am so thrilled to see your work and to meet you both. Thank you. Yep, here he has that effect on people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to. We don't want to. We just love we you to death. To. And you have um, just been such a powerful advocate for people uh, to reframe what dementia is like. And Hazel, I so appreciate you even talking in the beginning about living in denial with this because that is very common. And it's just, it's a journey you know, uh, in terms of, of living with this, living alongside it and, um, and graciously in, in terms of doing that. And, and we all have our moments when we're not so gracious and we shouldn't expect ourselves to be perfect because dementia hits, you know, it's, it's going to heighten emotions on both sides. It's going to bring tears to people's eyes of, of joy and just the, the profound, abilities that you still have that so many people think don't exist anymore. So I, I can't thank you two enough um, for being with us today. This was amazing. And I think it'll be life changing for so, so many people. And um, Hazel for, you know, supporting Harry on this journey. You know, you guys just deal in such an, an honest, authentic way. And we need more people telling their stories. I do have one question for you, Harry. We promote these shows. We, we coordinate with DAA and we put them on their Facebook page and stuff. Would it be appropriate or would you feel comfortable if we put them on your, your crafting and gardening page? Um, because there might be others that want to participate in highlighting their work. We'd love to get some gardeners in or cooks. I mean, everything is art, you know, and it's beautiful. And, you know, we, we really want to raise awareness of, of all different types of um, creativeness in there. So I, I don't want to overstep, but I thought I would ask if that would be appropriate or not. Yeah. Well, we will add in um, the Forget Me Not Crafting and Gardening group on Facebook too, as a partner with us then, if that's okay, that would be, that would be amazing. We would love that mm -hmm. very much. Um, in closing, again, I just can't thank you both enough. Um, I, we, Mary and I appreciate your time and your ability to share. Um, it, it's, it's just been really awesome. Um, we, you know, as I mentioned, partner with Dementia Action Alliance, you know, their website is daanow.org. Um, they also have a Facebook page that, uh, you know, if you're an artist, you can post your artwork there. And, um, and so look them up on that. And then of course, you know, you can always join Harry's Forget Me Not Facebook page with all your subcategories and you can list your artwork there. Um, now, Harry, I, why don't you give a little plug for who all participates in Forget Me Nots? Is it just for people with dementia or care partners, professionals? Who all shows up and what's it like? If, if, you, go, if you go to my Facebook page, Harry Urban, you will find uh, people from all over the world Come on. Uh, a lot of times, uh, the post is in Spanish or Italian. I have a lot of Italian friends. Mm. That come on. Um, like a, a Friday night chats is just just an hour Zoom session, and we just chat. And we get people from California, Texas, you know, all over. And and that that's what's so nice about this is like my my friends most of my friends that I consider my my true friends that care about me 
I never met. Mm -hmm. you know, and probably I'll never meet him. But we have such a bond that um, like a lot of times if I if I post something on my Facebook page and somebody thinks Harry's down, I better check on him. You know, mm -hmm. I get a phone call that I don't answer. I get a text message that I don't answer. Or, you know, at least somebody cares, you know. And the point is, we are never alone. Mm -hmm. That's that's so important to get through to people. Like, now, with our memory cafes, with when COVID came, our memory cafes shut down. Okay, so... It was like a two-year period we didn't have any memory cafes. Mm -hmm. Well, in that two-year period, a lot of the people that came, they passed away or they went into a nursing facilities. So, like, we would get 45, 50 people at one of our memory cafes, and I had six different ones. And mm -hmm. when COVID started up, uh, it was like starting from scratch. You know, trying to build it up. And what's so amazing is the questions I get now at a memory cafe is the same questions I answered 20 years ago. So not much has changed as far as the education goes. You know, people still have that fear. They play the what if games. You know, what's going to happen when I get to this stage? Mm -hmm. And at our memory cafes, we, we teach them, don't play those what-if games. Because you have no control over that. Just take control of the things you can do. Don't worry about the things you can't do, but polish the things you can do and learn new things. That's so important. And keep your sense of humor. Right you know, advice. it's only a disease. Hazel, is there anything you would like to add? Not that I can think of. He, he pretty much says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, though. She made living with dementia so much easier for me. Mm -hmm. Because, number one, she she never she never handicapped me by, by doing things for me. Mm -hmm. But she's smart enough to know when I get agitated, like tying a shoe or something like that, she steps in and she she stops me. She makes sure I, I don't do anything unsafe. Like with my woodworking, I can't I can't do the woodworking I did years ago because of it's unsafe for me to use power tools by myself. But a lot of things I do, I need assistance with. I need help. And a lot of times people living with dementia, they don't want to admit they need the help. Mm. You know, they 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 feel like they're losing so much that that they don't want to lose the manhood or they don't well, like I said, a 14 year old kid showed me how to use my printer. And if if he didn't do that, I would have never got the joy that I got out of that printer. So we live with dementia. Don't let a pride get in the way. Accept the help. Seek the help. Like a lot of time, I might be taking up a lot of time here, but but a simple thing like changing my password on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now I have a I have a, a computer science background. That 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 was my that was my job. I knew computers. I knew that, but. I got hacked and I had to change my my password on Facebook. I couldn't do it. Number one, I couldn't remember how to do it. And then when I looked it up with the instructions, I couldn't follow those instructions to do it. Uh, so I happened to mention it on my Facebook page. And a guy from, from Minnesota called me up. He also has dementia, but he was able to tell me what to do. Now, after I'd done it, I thought, oh, my God, I've done that millions of times, you know. But don't be afraid to ask for help. 
that that's what gets us through this disease. Exactly. Mary, do you want to give contact information again for yourself on how people can reach you? And then we'll go ahead and, and wrap up. Certainly. There. Thank you. Uh, and those are life lessons for everyone, by the way, Harry. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, you can reach me at marycrescenzo.com you know, www, my website. I have different sections on music and my work on Alzheimer's. Um, I'm, and I have a way to contact. You can contact me through there and I will respond. Also, I'm very proud to be a member of Dementia Map and um, you can reach me that way. And Lori can tell you a little bit about what that is. And um, look for me on Facebook in by my name. And I, I am always happy to to respond to anyone who has questions about how the arts, because that's my specialty, can um, help to enrich the life of caregivers as well as persons living with dementia. So I'm here for you. Fantastic. And for those of you that don't know what Dementia Map is, it's a global resource directory that has like 150 different categories that you can search. Um, Harry, we would still love to have your Forget Me Not um, Facebook group listed there. Um, I would love for the two of us to maybe Zoom sometime. Maybe we can get you set up with that. There's no cost for that. But it, your your group has helped so many people. I mean, you've got thousands of people you know, in your group from all over the world and have made such a difference. So, you know, we would love to see that. For myself, reach me through alzheimerspeaks.com. And that is where you'll find Dementia in the Arts um, Home too. Uh, Just go to our free educational resource tab and you'll see the Dementia in the Arts. If you are interested and living with dementia and want to share your artwork, we would love to feature you. We just think um, the variety and the voices, you know, if it's, we had Sam Simon just on uh, last month with his play. Um, We are open to all different types of art at all different levels. Um, The one consistent thing that we seem to hear from people is that when they're in the zone, they're, they're just happy and that their symptoms um, are lessened. Harry, do you feel that way too? Do you feel when you're in the zone doing your art that your symptoms um, disappear a little bit? It, it makes, it makes me feel good for especially doing shows like this. If one person gets anything out of it, I'm happy, you know, and um, it's not, it's not like you're bragging about what you do. It, you're trying to get the message across that I'm nobody special. If I can do it, you can do it. You might need help, but accept the help and get off the couch and do it. Mm-hmm. Well, again, thank you both so much for being with us. This has just absolutely been a joy. Um, and I know it's going to help so many other uh, families out there and people living with dementia. So thanks again, everybody. Until next time, uh, we will talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.